good morning my dear students you all know we have read about the nehru lal bahadur shastri indira gandhi and we have understood the transformations within the congress party within the politics of india but indira gandhi during the time of indira gandhi who suffered a lot because before that it, this period was known as a dangerous decade as like you have read many problems were there uh, with the government with the people with the country and so now we will discuss here we'll have a seminar on which on this topic indira gandhi indian politics people and whatever the changes were so now here the two students will just conduct this organized the seminar first will antima kumari and second will be given by drishti so i am going to give you the chance to antima with best of luck do your best and give the broad concept regarding the indira gandhi and their role their role in within the party their role for the people for the welfare of the people and for the indian politics so please no yes go ahead antima and every student will listen carefully so that the supplementary questions may be asked the name of the former prime minister indira gandhi was indira priyadarshini the title priyadarshini was given by ravindranath tagore she was born on 90th november 1917 in the house of jawaharlal nehru from the year 1959 she was politically active in the politics and in the same year she became the president of the indian national congress due to which the jawaharlal nehru was blamed for uh, nepotism after the death of jawaharlal nehru in 1964 under the leaders, leadership of lal bahadur shastri indira gandhi became the member of the rajya sabha and the cabinet minister of information and broadcasting all the senior leaders of inc wanted to became the prime minister the member of uh, the syndicate or old guard were k kamras from tamil nadu sanjeeva reddy from andhra pradesh s k patil from maharashtra atulya ghosh from bengal s nizalingappa from karnataka they were the un challenged ruler muradi ji desai was a strong candidate for prime minister but the member of syndicate did not want him to be the prime minister of india so the, a big compromise uh, by the syndicate and uh, indra in the year 1966 indira gandhi was uh, made the pm of india and uh, Muraji Desai was given the post of uh, cabinet minister, and uh, he also became the finance minister. And in the year nineteen sixty seven, he became the deputy prime minister. Now the year is a split in the Congress. The Congress get split into socialists and conservatives. the socialist believes in planning the more uh, economy was governed by the government and the conservative were focused on liberalization socialist was uh, for uh, uh, indira gandhi and the conservative was uh, adopted by murari ji desai then what was the from problem that were faced by indira gandhi after becoming the pm situation on economic front was poor due to the war of 1962 and 1965 rain fell in 1966 inflation was acute and food shortage grave steps taken to improve famine by our prime minister indira gandhi she launched a war like efforts to improve the famine and food shortage we wanted to seek the help of the us pl480 program to import wheat in for the food security 
but us import a less amount as demanded by india because it was unhappy with india so that india did not support in it in the vietnam war 1967 election it was the last time when the election of lok sabha and uh, vidhan sabha was uh, held together in uh, this election the congress faced a great uh, deflection in the result it got only 280 seats out of 520 before that it always get more than 350 seats now many members of the different party started to changing their parties a slogan uh, from it came from haryana i am gaya ram to and the state like bihar had seven government from 1967 to 1970 eight instances of presidential rule in seven states finally in uh, 1986 anti defection law was passed to solve the problem of iram and gara in 1969 president uh, election was held in which um, the two most uh, important faces were bv giri and uh, neelam sanjeeva reddy neel bv giri was uh, supported by indira gandhi and uh, neelam sanjeeva reddy was supported by old guard bb giri got the victory by very less percentage in the uh, in year 1969 nationalization of 14 banks took place the 14 largest commercial bank with effect from the midnight of 19th july 1969 these banks contain 85% of uh, banks deposited in the country before four days indira gandhi removed uh, the murari desai from the post of finance minister and uh, murari desai left the party of congress she also launched end point program which is related to faster development of land reforms urban land world will have feelings but the syndicates want uh, that government should be accountable to party and uh, whatever uh, law is uh, passed we also must be participated in it not only one person take the decisions so for the, on 12, 12 november 1969 for violating the party discipline former congress president lin Nislingappa removed PM Indira Gandhi from Congress. Indira Gandhi formed uh, her own party, Congress R or Congress Indira, and the old uh, Congress uh, were uh, have uh, their different uh, party name as Congress Organization. Nineteen seventy one elections. the con- party congress are or congress indira wins in that election there were uh, 705 members in the international congress and uh, from that 446 members joins the congress indira party with the member of lok sabha uh, mp but uh, the party congress indra lost the absolute majority because the, the total number of seats were 520 and they have only 256 so the, the, the party dmk and left parties supported uh, the party of uh, congress indra then a uh, privacy persists uh, occur in the country which was the government uh, promised the princely state who joined the indian india to give him them a monthly salary but uh, indira gandhi removed this policy and then the princely the ruler of the princely state go, went to supreme court and the supreme court said that if the government had uh, promised then he must uh, uh, followed that 
so the 24th uh, which was done by 24th uh, constitutional amendment pm dissolved uh, the lok sabha and announced fresh election the election was uh, going to held in uh, 1972 but it held in 1971 thank you now this we will go going to continue sir okay thank, thank you madam Yes. Good morning, wait, sir, wait, and thank you for giving us this. Okay. okay. So thank Go you for ahead. giving us this opportunity. So I will be continuing where the where Antima left about the election of nineteen seventy one. It was the landslide victory for Congress in this general election, uh, not because of the charismatic personality of the Indira Gandhi, which not only attracted their old members but also attracted a uh, new youth politicians. uh in uh, the congress the indira congress was opposed by the alliance of Jant uh, of janta party uh, with uh, with samyukta socialist party praja socialist party swatantra party and bhartiya jansangh in uh, the nation the congress of indira got a total of 352 seats whereas the uh, opposition got only 51 seats it was a landslide victory for indira gandhi at that time the economic growth was mostly more than 3% which was quite higher than the last election in the 1967 but the it was not uh, up to the mark of the uh, predictable growth rate of the uh, fourth five year plan although green revolution was launched by her and it made india food uh, food self sufficient in uh, in of in india but it also didn't uh, make the unemployment rate lower or the hunger or the problem of food shortage it only benefited the uh, mostly the punjab and haryana and western up the other problem which arose in the year 1971 was the problem of eastern pakistan where the people were kind of genocide by the western pakistan armies and government even the politicians of eastern pakistan were not given much of importance in the parliament of the western pakistan as a result of which uh, more than 10 lakh refugees uh, uh, came to india this presented a, a matter of major concern for india and especially for indira gandhi for this she gave two uh, two ideas to be implemented first she said uh, the army a clear cut indication to prepare for the war and second she tried to uh, uh, pressurize pakistan internationally for this she went to usa to talk the the issue of eastern pakistan with uh, the, then the president richard nixon but usa at that time was a supporter of pakistan and was looking for a friend uh, in pakistan in the southeast asia they called a uh, they gave a cold reply and for uh, in response of which indira gandhi went in a treaty of uh, friendship and cooperation with ussr on 9th of august 1971 on 3rd of december 1971 pakistan air force dropped uh, uh, bombarded the indian air stations of uh, uh, amritsar pathan port shrinagar ambala and jodhpur in response of which in the midnight of 4th of december indira gandhi launched uh, launched a full fledged war against pakistan by announcing it uh, from all india radio as a response of which indian army was deployed in dhaka and the air force started bombarding the western pakistan army whereas an operation uh, trident was launched on 4th of december in which the indian navy destroyed the uh, karachi ports of uh, pakistan on 5th of uh, december the pakistani navy port were destroyed after seeing such a uh, continuous uh, losses of pakistan in the war the us uh, the us president richard nixon sent their uh, task force 74 uh, led by the uss enterprise to help pakistan and counter the india but with the help of indra's uh, indira gandhi's treaty with ussr uss uh, ussr already had sent uh, the two cruise uh, the two cruises with uh, missiles and destroyer on 3rd and uh, on 6th and 13th of december as as a result the usa uh, back uh, back back to their place and they refrain from attacking on india this uh, and on 16th of december the more than 90000 pakistani soldiers surrendered to india 
and a new uh, independent state bangladesh was created this uh, the indira gandhi indira gandhi's uh, uh, policy regarding this uh, matter uh, gave her a uh, international prestige and praise it not only not only uh, liberate uh, uh, stripped more than half of the population of pakistan but also uh, Uh, but also presented india as a politically and militarily uh, military dominant uh, state in the subcontinent the other uh, major uh, uh, step which was taken by indira gandhi was the pokhran nuclear test in 1974 on on 18th may 1974 a, po- a nuclear test naming smiling buddha was conducted in pokhran rajasthan it was india stated it as a peaceful nuclear explosive it was only for peace and for uh, generating the sovereignty of india to its highest it 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 also became a matter of great importance because only the p5 countries of the un uh, had the nuclear power but india became the first country out of this p5 nations to hold the nuclear power but soon the golden image of indira gandhi began to tarnished because the year 1974 bec- uh, uh, came to be known as a great turmoil in the domestic regions of india the first can be felt in the gujarat navnirman andolan it was a socio political movement started in december 1973 it was it it sought reinvention and renovations by the student and the middle class people against the economic crisis and corruption monarji the side the leader of the opposition sat on an indefinite fast in response of which the indira gandhi sent army to gujarat to suppress this uh, protest but it uh, in re- but in in re- uh, response it got, it got uh, more violent and the uh, the opposition asked for the for from indira to dismiss the state cabinet which she did and a fresh election was conducted in 1974 75 in which congress lost and janta morcha party came in power the second most turmoil can be seen in bihar where their student protest led by bihar chhatra sangharsh samiti uh, for better education and uh, food in the hostel got a uh, quite uh, uh, support from the uh, magnificent leader jay prakash narayan it was also known as the jp andolan jp uh, jay prakash narayan gave the slogan for sampurn kranti he thought that even after the independence of india uh, of 27 years there are many people who are not able to access their rights and uh, there there are many people who are dying out of hunger due to for- food shortage and economy is also not rising he sought to bring the youth for uh, social transformation in the country the third turmoil which occurred during 1974 was the railway worker strike started on 8th of may it was the one of the biggest railway strike ever done in india more than 13 to 14 lakh uh, employees of railway went on strike their dem- they, their demand was against the low wages the harsh working conditions and the long hours of work but in response of which indira gandhi brutally suppressed the this protest and the fourth and the most it can be a most an official reason for imposing emergency was the raj narayan versus state of up government verdict on 12th of june 1975 allahabad high court gave the verdict against the indira gandhi in the case of uh, in the in the case of raj narayan versus state of up in which she was found guilty of mal practices during the general election of 1971 in result of which she was found guilty and Uh, her like, her seat was uh, uh, declared null and void and she uh, and she lost and a ban was imposed for imposed for 6 years on her for from contesting any election she challenged this uh, verdict in the supreme court but supreme court upheld the judgment of high court and allowed her to be as a prime minister but without any privileges on 25th of june 1975 Jay Prakash Narayan organized a big rally in Delhi and asked the police officers to not follow the immoral orders given by the government. It kind of gave a great tension in the uh, Indira Gandhi of losing her seat and losing her herself as a prime minister. So, on advice of his her son Sanjay Gandhi, 
On 26th of June 1975, she imposed the emergency. Emergency was the darkest uh, years in which we see we saw the death of democracy. The reason given by Indira Gandhi was that the uh, there is an imminent danger in the security of India being threatened by internal disturbance and also the ongoing economic crisis. During those emergency days, uh, press was censure, censored, the forced sterilization created havoc and chaos in the, uh, in, the, in the many parts of India. Indira Gandhi also bypassed the parliament and she passed uh, ordinance without uh, consenting the, uh, uh, without consenting and taking the consent from, the, from her uh, cabinet. One of the major uh, things which she did was the subverted, she subverted the judiciary. She passed the 42nd amendment in 1976, in which the major thing she, she did was the restriction on judicial review, which kind of subvert, subverted the judiciary and its independence. The opposition leaders were arrested and were tortured in jail. All these turmoil gave a show, shook, uh, was a, a uh, crisis was uh, created a crisis in India and due to international pressure and the ongoing crisis, she withdraw the emergency in March 1977. And in 1977, again, the sixth general election was conducted and in which the Janta Party Alliance came in power and Congress for the first time after independence lost the election. Not only uh, losing election, Indira Gandhi's image also got tarnished internationally or nationally. But the Janta Party Alliance did not rule more than uh, even for two years. There were several reasons by which uh, the party and the government got dissolved. Some of them was the internal disturbance between the alliance. Second were the violence, the increasing of communal violence between Hindus and Muslims and the increment in the uh, rates of crime, which was not co uh, controlled by the police or the government. As a result, the government got dissolved. And again, in 1980s, the seventh general election was conducted. And in the campaign of that election, Indira Gandhi accepted her fault, which she did by imposing the emergency and asked the people for, uh, to, uh, to, to, for, uh, to just uh, forget about that and to just give her a new chance, which the people also gave her. And uh, back in 1890, again, the Congress came in power. But uh, soon in 1980s, uh, there was turmoil in Punjab. So for that, the Congress uh, gave their support to a extremist, extremist leader, Jarnal Singh Bhinderwal, to confront the Akali Dal in Punjab. But soon, uh, the uh, Jarnal Singh uh, 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 did a lot of violence in Punjab and Congress also lost their control over him. As a result, in 1983, the Binderwal, along with his group, killed the DIG of Punjab in the on the stairs of Golden Temple, which kind of gave the hike to the Congress and the government to start Operation Blue Star, which is the last operation carried out with the Indira Gandhi, in which the army encircled the Golden Temple and fired uh, on the Binderwal and his group, in which the Binderwal got killed. But along with that, the Akal Tat of the Golden Temple got destroyed due to which the Sikh community all around the world got furious and angered. And they kind of stayed, uh, started hating Indira Gandhi for her uh, this decision. As a result, on 31st of October, 1984, she was assassinated by her two Sikh bodyguard. Talking about her economic, economic during her uh, reason, reign, the, she nationalized 14 banks, but she also nationalized insurance sector and coal sector. She banished private capital and enterprise. In 1973, her government enacted the Monopolies and Restrictive Trade Practices Act, which crippled the private sector. She also gave the draconian law to the private sector in 1973, the Foreign Exchange Violation Act, which barred the Indian citizen from holding any kind of foreign currency. As a result, corruption bloomed and the uh, private sector was zoomed. She encouraged uh, foreign investment in automobiles and consumer electronics during 1982 and 1983. But soon in 1982, her government completely deregulated the cement industry. As a result, cement got disappeared and 
production of cement got zoomed and actual market price of uh, cement was dropped. So that's that's <clears throat> very good, uh, Drishti. Really a broad explanation and really you have given everything that occurred in India, whether the economically, politically, militarily, that all things uh, has been presented by you in a nice way. Really, it's a very, very, and there are certain points where myself has uh, just learned this and uh, just uh, so the thanks, you deserve thanks. <clears throat> And later now, I would like to just ask, it will be started, uh, who will ask the first questions? Please ask the first questions, a uh, very relevant very questions. Very good, Anubhuti. Le give very the chance pleasant. to Anubhuti. Okay. Anubhuti. Sir, actually, Sana cannot mute, uh, unmute herself, so I'm asking on her behalf the first question. Oh. Uh, from Drishti. How would you like to compare and contrast the authoritarian leadership of Indira Gandhi and Narendra Modi? This was my question. Thank you, Sona. Sir, talking about the authoritarian uh, leadership of Indira Gandhi, she was quite stubborn and uh, from starting all only, she was not listening to her own uh, ministers of the party. Whereas Prime Minister Modi has consolidated his party to a quite well. But this consolidation policy was not carried out well by Indira Gandhi, which we can see that later the party got separated into two groups. The, uh, the authoritarian policy of Indira Gandhi actually got a very uh, negative and drawback for her because of her authoritarian and repressive policies, which we can see during 1975 and 74 in which she repressed and um, ve repressed various protests brutally by the help of army. Whereas Narendra Modi has consolidated his party and has limited the authoritarian over the protest and the people of India. Indira Gandhi has for uh, had forgot about the uh, principles of democracy during her reign, about the uh, freedom that uh, the constitution has given to the people for protest and the uh, internal it is not quite visible and uh, very um, conflicting in the in recent time for Narendra Modi. So her authoritarian was uh, a drawback, and it decreased her image in the uh, in the national politics. Um, but here in uh, Narendra Modi, he has quite consolidated the party and quite restricted her authoritarian view. Really good answer, very Sana. You should accept it. Because the answer is uh, uh, clearly comparison here. Uh, the, really, this was the major thing. However, there are many things for the uh, criticizing for criticizing the Narendra Modi also. If I'll give the chance to Sana, she will ask many supplementary questions. But I, as you know, I don't have much time. Asneha is waiting for the another one. I am giving the chance to yes, Asneha, please. Good morning, sir. So my question is from Antima. Is that was the policy of abolishing the privy purse was just a uh, is for a welfare of the people or just a step taking her political image in the politics in order to dominate? Good question. Very Can you repeat question. the question, please? But one repeat. Okay. Issue your voice has cracked. Okay. Was the policy of abolishing privy purse taken by the Indira Gandhi is for welfare of the people or just a step for maintaining uh, uh, her uh, political image in the politics? It was done for maintaining her uh, political image in the society. <laughs> Only this was done for that. So there would be a lot of criticism if they would she would Sir, because and, uh, and uh, people also because uh, India was uh, suffered from a great economic depression and if uh, the salary was provided to the rulers, it is a vestige of money also. Okay, okay. Drishti, would you like to give a reason over this? So, so the main reason that Indira Gandhi gave was that the salaries given to the princely state was a burden on Indian economy. As during that time, India was suffering from economic crisis and they did not have much of the resources and the money for giving the salaries. So her reason was that uh, this only uh, for abolishing the privy purse, which the uh, Supreme Court 
uh, upheld and said that uh, if you have uh, just promised, then you have to give. But she refrained from it. So I same guess so that. Same answer has been. Uh, uh, yes. Yes, same answer was given, but good it was. Now Karuna is given the chance. Karuna, you please speak. You ask the question. Very short time is left. It is not sufficient yet time. Good morning, sir. Very good morning. Sir, my question is from Drishti. That she told yeah. that Operation Blue Star started by the Indira Gandhi that angered many Sikhs. So why there is a need of Operation Blue Star? Can you explain? Yes, good question. Sir? Um, sorry, Karuna, it was the uh, Congress first gave the support to an extremist leader, uh, Jarnail Singh Bhindarwal, but later he got uh, inculcated in many of the violent activities in Punjab, which led to uh, much of violence in Punjab. And he also uh, created her, his group and stayed in the guest house of Golden Temple and kind of roamed in the Golden Temple with arms and ammunition. And on, uh, as I stated, on uh, in 1983, he, he, along with his group, killed the DIG of Punjab. It was the ferocious movement which turned uh, and uh, turned the government uh, their uh, focus on this issue. As a result, okay, Operation okay, Blue Star was Okay, launched. okay, Drishti, really you have nicely pointed out, but uh, due to the scarcity of time, Many students are still Sandarsi Anvuti is uh, supposed to be asked questions here and uh, they are not uh, because time uh, is not allowing me to give them chance here but this seminar just learn every student will conduct the seminar 